Islamic way of life Islamic way of life Islamic way of life Islamic way of life الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel Welcome and marhaba to another episode of this beautiful series The Islamic Way of Life where we discuss the Islamic way of living and the way our lives should be governed by Islam and the Sharia of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi by the Sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in everything that we do Subhanallah and today we are going to speak of this very topic to be adhering to the Sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how the Sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can adorn and beautify our lives Allahu Akbar that we become one of those that are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following into the footsteps of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is a sign of love for the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we are acting upon the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a sign of complete love for the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sunnah can lead us to paradise. Allah Akbar. It is also mentioned that we will be granted the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in paradise if we follow the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sunnah of the beloved Nabi it can lead to being under the shade of the divine throne on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. This is the bestowal that we will receive, inshallah, if we and our actions are in accordance with the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who acts upon the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at a time when innovation, ignorance and sin are prevalent as it is in today's society will gain the reward of hundred martyrs. Allahu Akbar. Gain the reward of hundred martyrs. Subhanallah. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam supplicated for mercy three times for those who act upon the sunnah teach it and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam declared them to be his heirs subhanallah this is such a great blessing by the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we are told in the mubarak hadith that he supplicated for mercy for those who follow the sunnah who act upon the sunnah allah grant teach it rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam supplicated for mercy three times for such people and he وسلم, declared them to be his heirs. Can you imagine the, the extent of it? Allahu Akbar. Bear in mind that neglecting the precious prophetic model is not without adverse effect. What is the opposite effect, the side effect of not following the sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It has been related that those people who neglect emphasized sunnah will incur the curse of Allah Azza wa Jal and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith can be found in Al-Mustadrak al sahihain And one report states that such folks will be deprived of the intercession of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Those who neglect the emphasized sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, such people will be deprived of the intercession of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Ameen bijahi nabi ameen. Look at the lives of Sahaba. How they got to where they were just by following into the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By following the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is mentioned about Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala who is a Sahabi ibn Sahabi. Sahabi a son of the son of a Sahabi because his father also is the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His mother as well, she is the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Abu Sufyan and Sayyida Hind radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Subhanallah. He, once he came to visit uh, Makkah Mukarrama, he asked Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Again, a Sahabi ibn Sahabi is known to be uh, so passionate about following the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In each and everything he would 
look for ways to implement the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it was the bringing of him given by his beloved father Amir al-Mu'minin Sayyidina Umar al-Faruq radiallahu ta'ala na subhanallah Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala asked please tell me where would Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam offer salah in Masjid al-Haram subhanallah and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu directed him and guided him to a place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would offer salah and told him that it is two or three hands distance from the wall Allahu Akbar look at the enthusiasm when it comes to the following the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do we really follow the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our maybe we can say as a lip service merely lip service this yes we do we love our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we truly love the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then where are his sunnah Shouldn't his sunnah be apparent and reflecting in our daily lives? This is the time to introspect and to look into our lives as to whether this claim of ours is true or false. As it is mentioned that acting upon the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a sign of complete love for the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if the sign is not there, then how can it be proven, how can it be known that whether or not someone loves the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So whoever you see acting upon the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that means that person really loves the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. A person who does miswak just to follow the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he loves Rasulullah. As the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states that niyyatul mu'mini khayrun min amalihi the intention of a believer is better than his action. On the other side, habitually abandoning the sunnah renders a person a transgressing sinner, Allahu Akbar, and may lead to misguidance as well. Even worse, it may even lead one to bad death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us death with faith, with iman, and longing to meet our Creator Allah Azza wa Jal. Ameen bijahin nabiyil ameen. Dear viewers of Madani channel, the paragons of submission to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the most Allah-fearing souls to tread this earth after the prophets are the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Yet, their zeal and unwavering commitment to the sunnah was not only driven by fear but by burning love for Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that caused through every atom of their being and compelled them to observe the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without compromise. On one occasion Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala got onto his ride and recited the relevant supplication, relevant dua. He then began to smile, surprised by this those around him asked the reason for the smile and he replied, I have seen the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing this, so I have done the same, Allahu Akbar. Imagine, just to emulate the Sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar. One should have the love to do so, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah. Let's love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the way the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved him. Whenever somebody would visit Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and notify him of a day plan to travel. He radiallahu ta'ala anhu would remark, wait, I will bid you farewell the same way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would bid us farewell. Allah Akbar, subhanallah. Sayyidina Salama ibn Akwa radiallahu ta'ala anhu performed salah near a particular pillar in Masjid al-Nabuhi Sharif when asked why he carefully chose to pray in that a particular place he radiallahu ta'ala and who explained that I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa with great meticulousness offering salah by this pillar subhanallah subhanallah then come to the generation of the followers of the companions and the Ahlul Bayt and their commitment to the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is also remarkable the history of Islam based testimony Sayyidina Abu Bakr Shibli was in need of his miswak at the time of wudu. Unable to find it, but wanting to act upon the sunnah of using a miswak in wudu, he purchased a replacement for one dinar, one gold coin. Imagine one gold coin for one miswak. Allahu Akbar. When someone asked 
how could he spend such a large amount of money to obtain just a simple miswak? He replied, if Allah Almighty asked me on the day of judgment as to why I left the sunnah of miswak of his beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what answer shall I give? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. No money, no money can be equal to the sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even if it was more than one dinar, we are sure that he would have spent it, Allah, but just to follow this beautiful sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina wa sallam. Dear viewers, in another heartwarming incident, the founder of Jamia Shafiya Mubarakpur, Hafiz Millat Allama Abdul Aziz, rahmatullahi ta'ala, he once injured his right foot. And when the time came to treat the wound, he initially removed the sock on his left foot and then the right. Somebody requested the reason behind removing the left sock first. As the injury was on the right foot, this great follower of Rasulullah explained that it is sunnah to remove the sock of the left foot first. Allahu Akbar, subhanallah, subhanallah. Such is the enthusiasm of our pious predecessors to follow the sunnah of the beloved Nabi. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Dear viewers, Sayyidina Mujadid Al-Fasani would declare to those in his company that this era is distant from the prophetic era and full of corruption and discord. The darkness of innovation and transgression has further enveloped it. Allahu Akbar. Without the radiance of Sunnah, there is no road to salvation in such darkness. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That was in the time of Sayyidina Mujadid al-Fasani rahmatullahi ta'ala the revival of this ummah, Allahu Akbar. He is saying, and his time was few hundred years ago, Allahu Akbar. Imagine how much corruption do we have, how further away are we from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and how much darkness is prevalent there in our time, Allahu Akbar. Isn't that there should be more emphasis on following the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa in our time even more so? Definitely. There are numerous sunnahs of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we can adopt with only a slight effort and a little focus, Allahu Akbar. For example, washing both hands up to the wrist before and after eating, dining while sitting on the floor in any of the three sunnah postures, Allahu Akbar, using the right hand for eating and drinking water and sitting down when having a drink. Likewise, Greeting the fellow Muslim brothers. It is also the sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even if you do not know the person while traveling to and from home to school or from or to college or school, madrasa, work, utilizing two hands to shake the hands of others as opposed to one hand. Allahu Akbar. And sleeping on your right side because this is the sunnah of sleeping. When performing other deeds in accordance with the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, make the intention of doing so to follow the practices of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We ask Allah azza wa jal to let the sweet zaifas of sunnah to move our hearts and minds and limbs. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen. Subhanallah. This is the importance of sunnah and following into the footsteps of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Encouraging people to act upon the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is significant from many aspects. The first point to understand is that the fundamental reason for a Muslim to act upon the Sunnah is because Allah Azza wa Jal gave the command to follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Almighty Allah states in the Holy Quran, Qul in kuntum Allah Say you, O beloved, that, O people, if you love Allah, you should therefore obey me. Allah Akbar. Allah Azza wa Jal has also stated, and follow the path of the one who has turned to me. Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned to Allah the most. We should follow him without any restrictions, which includes following him in the acts that are fard, following him in the acts that are wajib, following him in the acts that are sunnah, and the acts that are mustahab. Allah Azza wa Jal declared the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam an excellent example. Allah 
Azzawajal states, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Indeed, for you following the Messenger of Allah is best. Subhanallah. Who is saying our Creator? What is best for us? Following into the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Dear viewers, we are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who would know what is best for us other than the one who has created us, Allahu Akbar? You know, can the user, let's say for example, I'm using this device. Can the user know more about the device itself than the manufacturer? No, that cannot be the case, Allahu Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, Allahu Rabbu Muhammadin salla alayhi wa sallama. Our creator and the Rabb of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our Lord, our cherisher, our sustainer. He says to us that for you following the messenger of Allah is best, Allahu Akbar. So shouldn't we follow that is best? You no, know, it is human nature to want the best of everything. If you're wearing clothes, you would want that I must wear the best of clothes. If you are driving a car, you would want to own the best of cars that you can afford, that, that the money can buy. If you are looking for having children, you want your children to have the best of characters, to best of education, the best of everything. But why then when it comes to our character, we follow other examples, we follow celebrities that are indulged in sinning and are encouraging others to soil themselves into the evil of sin, darkness of sins, Allahu Akbar, instead of following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who will take us closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala whose character is the best, Allahu Akbar. Just as the fard and wajib acts are a part of this perfect example, so too are the non-wajib acts of worship and dealings conducted by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are great religious wisdom behind acting upon the Sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This can be partially understood through the fact that in life, we not only carry out the tasks that are necessary, but we also do things that help us do the tasks that are necessary. Allah Akbar. For example, during our educational life, we also study books that are not part of the syllabus or curriculum. Similarly, not only do we acquire skills that are necessary for our occupation, but we also learn skills related to our profession as well. Likewise, to protect ourselves from greater problem, we also avoid the things that are a preface to it. For instance, we avoid going out in freezing conditions without a jacket to protect ourselves from catching a cold. In terms of our worldly affairs, not only do we try to accomplish our main objectives, but we also go the extra mile. For example, after building a house, we also decorate it by painting it a certain color and opting for unnecessary embellishments like marble flooring. The point being conveyed is that although some things are not necessary per se, they prevent something bad from occurring, enhance the beauty of things or aid in completing the tasks that are necessary. Allah Akbar. The matter of Sunnah and Mustahab acts is similar. To understand this, reflect over the, the example that have you ever heard of an individual who prays 20 units of Tarawih Salah but does not pray Isha? Have you ever heard of anyone who offers the Tahajjud prayer or the Sunnah units of Fajr but does not pray the Fard units itself? Similarly, have you ever heard of anyone who offers the Sunnah units for any other salah but leaves out the fard, you will not find such an individual because anyone who offers optional salah will certainly offer the prayers that are necessary. Allahu Akbar. The same applies to other forms of worship. For it is not the case that someone who observes all the optional fasts of Rajab and Shaban will miss the compulsory fast of Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. In short, optional and sunnah acts of worship bring a person closer to the related compulsory acts of worship. Allah subhanallah subhanallah. Human nature dictates that a person who pays attention to small things will pay extra attention to related things that are of greater importance, of greater good. It is not the case that someone who avoids doubtful things unreluctantly uh, commits things that are definitely haram. This wisdom has been 
alluded to in the hadith that states a person grazing his animals near the field of the king will find the animals entering the field. Hence, it is safer to avoid the boundary of such a thing lest one falls into that which is actually forbidden. Allahu Akbar. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers, at times it is fascinating how actions that are optional and mustahab act as a more effective barrier stopping sins than a barrier uh, premised on actions that are necessary. For example, a person may wear a turban, which is a sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or have a shawl over his head, which is the custom of the pious people. Such a person will not go to the pub wearing this attire as it will stop him from doing so. Even if he was to go there, he would first leave this sunnah by changing into shirt and trousers and some other attire or some other clothing then go. It is not plausible that a bearded Muslim will wear a turban or topi and go to the pub. Note how a sunnah and mustahab act can prevent someone from the impermissible act of going to a pub. Subhanallah. Not only this, but we also observe in society that if a bearded shopkeeper with a turban who suppose deceives whilst selling goods, people will make remarks like, brother, how can you do such thing despite being religious? Or they can say, how can you do such things despite having a beard? Or they may even say, how can you wear a turban and do such things? Allahu Akbar. Looking at another example, if a person wearing a turban sits down and converses with people at the time of salah and does not get up and go and pray salah, even those who do not pray themselves will say the azan has taken place and salah is taking place in congregation, so go and pray salah. It is almost as if his turban, a sunnah, is compelling him to offer salah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. What is the takeaway from all these examples? Is that acts that are sunnah and mustahab are perceived by others as a barrier that prevents sinning. Allahu Akbar, subhanallah, subhanallah. So sunnah can become a barrier between us and the acts that are sinful. It keeps us away from sins, subhanallah. This is one of the benefits of adopting the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa into our lives. Another aspect of acts that are sunnah is that they beautify righteous deeds. For example, it is compulsory to wear clothing that covers a person from navel to below the knees. However, to cover the entire body is sunnah, which also looks more presentable. Such is the great wisdom behind following the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us tawfiq to make our homes an environment that is full with sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make our awlad and the children practice the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the very young age. So the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhu wa sallam is embedded in them. Allahu Akbar. Ameen bijahil nabiyil ameen. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallam. Islamic way of life. Islamic way of life Islamic way of life Islamic way of life